Hello, my name is Jen and welcome back to The Book Refuge. It is time to talk about episode four, An Affair of Honor. So things get pretty serious <laughs> in this episode. Oh my goodness. So as I have been doing in previous ones, for some reason this is your first episode, I highly recommend you go back and start at the beginning so you know how I'm kind of setting these reviews up. Um, this one, I, I have a lot of mixed feelings about this one because I feel like this episode was a lot of just kind of dragging out what happened in the last episode. Um, so there, I don't know. I just have a lot of mixed feelings about it. It's probably because I don't like seeing Daphne with the prince, even though he seems very sweet. He seems like he's a real nice dude. I just am annoyed with it. And I think that I prefer the way the book really does this part of the book where they keep spending time together and they just like each other so much. And it inevitably just leads to kissing and then you know, everything else kind of proceeds the same way, but I don't really like this extra angst added in, particularly because we have a lot of angst coming down the road. So that just kind of colors my opinion of this episode a little bit because in a way it kind of feels like filler for at least the first half of it because obviously the second half of it is where we have some really direct from book to screen kind of content, but it was a little frustrating for me the first half. But as always, we will go through my top favorite moments and then we'll get more into the things that were book inaccuracies. So my first favorite point out moment would be Penelope and Eloise at the beginning of this episode. And Eloise is starting to develop the idea that she wants to figure out who Lady Whistledown is. And it's not super explained, but I believe it's mostly that Eloise wants to find out who this woman is because she admires her so much. We've seen her mention again and again in previous episodes just how, you know, enamored she is with Lady Whistledown. And I think she maybe, like, wants advice from her or something. I'm not exactly sure what the buildup is for that. But it is pretty fun to watch them talking about it. And we see Penelope, like, not really, you know, encouraging Eloise, but is very interested listening to her talk about Lady Whistledown. And Eloise has all these theories about who she thinks it is. She thinks it might must be a servant. Um, she, you know, but then at points in the show, she's like, well, but a servant wouldn't necessarily be at all these balls where we see this stuff go down. So that's very interesting. And it was just really cool to see them interacting. I, you know, we do see uh, Penelope be kind of short with Eloise later in the episode and a lot of that has to do with Eloise needs to learn to read the room but I do want to make a point out that I love the actress who plays Eloise she just has such a great flow and she's so much fun whenever she's on the screen and even though she's just like woo wild and crazy I just really really like her a lot and She's been a lot of fun to interact with and watch as we go along. So I really like her. Next, we have my next top moment. And even though this is a painful moment, and it actually started as a as a moment that I was going to put on a, you know, that I didn't like so much. But I really, the emotional arc of it through the scene. And that is Daphne and Violet talking. And Daphne has been given this gift by the prince. And she's going to wear it to this ball that night. And Violet is saying, like, well, what about the Duke? You know, like, if you wear this necklace, you're kind of making a statement that you've picked the prince over the Duke. And she's like, I, I, the prince is really nice. He's a great guy. But you have chemistry with the Duke. And there's something there. And Daphne finally admits to her mother that this was all a lie. They were pretending to do it to get attention and now it's over and the Duke is going to be leaving and it was a lie. And so Violet, you can tell she's a little disappointed that it's a lie as well as you can see the compassion for her daughter that it's pretty clear to Violet that Daphne has more feelings for the Duke than she can, you know, do anything with at this point, you know. And it's just really heartbreaking, but also heartwarming to see because that scene starts with a pretty whiny Daphne. That is actually something I like wrote in my detractor is again, they're showing this Daphne as like really whiny and like poor me, poor me. And I do not feel that the Daphne from the book is like that at all. And so it's frustrating to me. But by the end of the scene, it's a really beautiful mother daughter moment where 
Violet is now comforting Daphne and saying like, you know, it's going to be okay. We're going to work it out. And the prince is a really great guy. So it's not like this is a losing situation, but you know, Violet has said like, marry your friend. You'll find this person you have this chemistry with and it'll work, you know? And then in contrast to the scene we have with Daphne and Violet, there's this scene with the Duke and Lady Danbury and he is packing up his Hastings house and he's getting ready to leave. And Lady Danbury is saying that you are running away from love and whatever you had going with Daphne, whether it was false or not, there's something there. And she's like, love can change everything and you're choosing to run away from it. And then Simon's counter to that is that because Lady Danbury uses, um, you know, Queen Charlotte and King George as an example of like, look how him marrying this woman has like changed society and it's made them acceptable. And Simon counters with the king is mad and at any moment he could change his mind and we could be cast from the aristocracy back down to where we were before. And so love doesn't really mean anything at all. And obviously that is him using a very jaded view and you can tell that Lady Danbury is very disappointed in him but it's also just really it's it's really beautiful too because Lady Danbury is amazing and you can tell that she now sees into the heart of him even more so than before and yeah I just really like that moment even though it's hard to watch then of course we get to the garden um this is altered from the book a little bit we'll talk about that more maybe in the inaccuracies part but um daphne is about to be proposed to by the prince so the prince has asked permission from the prince has asked permission from antony to propose and daphne wasn't sure yet but you know she is about to be proposed to and he's about to do it and then she can't take it and so she runs out and she like rips off this diamond necklace she does keep it in her hand but I was the first time I saw this I thought she like threw this diamond necklace on the ground but she does rip it off and like hold it in her hand the whole time and Simon follows her out and I like this moment because she spews all this stuff back at him and is like I'm gonna be a princess and again she's looking really whiny but you can tell she's trying to get him to react to her because she has all these feelings for him she's been longing for him and imagining him and he's just being so damn stoic and this is a moment like it's not spelled out to you but me as someone who knows the history of Simon I know part of it is is that when he is so filled with emotion he can't speak you know, because he will stutter or he won't be able to get it out. And so that is when he kind of retreats into himself and he's looking at this girl and he knows some of the desires of her heart. She shared them with him and he knows that he's not the man to do it, but he still follows her into the garden and follows her into that maze and they start kissing and quickly he is just all up in her business. There was some boob grab and some pulling up of the dress and it was really hot and sexy but it didn't last for very long because Antony finds them he saw her run off and he finds them and so it escalates into pistols at dawn and now we're gonna have a duel and Simon says <laughs> Simon says that he all but admits to Daphne that he would rather die than marry her and she just can't understand why like she doesn't she doesn't get it she doesn't know what about her would not be worthy of him loving her and of course it's completely the opposite he cares for her so much that he could never marry her and not let her have children because he knows that that's what she wants she's told him to his face i need a husband and i want a family and that is the desires of my heart and he knows that he can't be that man so he agrees to meet her brother at dawn and so that sets things in motion for them and then my my final top moment of course is actually the duel which there are a couple things that changed for me that i'm a bit sad about so it is the it is true that daphne and colin talk about it and then colin ends up taking her to where the duel is but there's a line in the book that doesn't get done in the show and it, to me it shows how our bridgerton siblings are not as connected as they are in the show. And that kind of makes me a little bit sad because now watching it a second time even, there are a few of the siblings that are close, but for Antony, it isn't just about his own honor in the book. He honestly is just so upset and hurt 
that a friend of his would dishonor his sister when he'd warned him about it. See, that's the thing too. He's warned him again and again. And just earlier in this episode, he was like, I'm so, thank you for not damaging my sister and for honoring our friendship. And then for Simon to give into it when Antony knows he won't marry him, you know. But then it also sends, um, so, but anyway, there's a line that Colin says to Daphne in the book that's just so beautiful because they both are looking for each other in the book. And I know I'm doing book inaccuracies, but I have to, to explain this top moment because Colin says to her, like, I would do anything for you, Daphne. And because he's still, he's her older brother. And in the show, I feel like you don't feel that both Benedict and Colin are her older brothers too. I don't know. In the book, you really feel it because they all just love her. She was the first sister for them that came along. And Colin and Daphne are very close. Like they confide a lot to each other. And you just don't get to see that connection in the show. And it makes me really sad because that's would have been a moment to really amp that up. But the, so he ends up bringing her and they actually have Antony shoot which I was like, okay, guys, calm down with the dramatics here. And then she asked to speak with Simon. And in this, in the show, it's a lot of like guilt ridden conversation. She's like, why don't you love me enough? All these things. And he finally admits, he's like, it's because I admire you. You've told me what you wanted. And if you're with me, I can't give you children. So our first twisting of the truth comes out. And when you read in the book, he actually says, it says in like this, the subtext around it where he says, I can't have children. And he says, the truth came out. Well, it was almost the truth. It actually says that in like the tags around it. Um, and she's like, I don't understand what you mean. And he's like, you've said you want kids. And if you're with me, you won't have that. And I can't do that to you. And so he's like, so please just let your brother finish this because Simon isn't planning to shoot at Antony, but Antony will shoot at Simon. So Simon is basically going to die. And she says it again. She's like, you're willing to die, then do this. And he's like, I'm willing to die rather than take this away. And so I like how the show sets this up because later on when we're feeling betrayed, because it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt, guys, it's going to hurt a little bit. <laughs> he did offer to die and he'll bring that up again. He'll, you know, and to her, it's just like, yeah, but you could have told me the truth of why. And like, it's like she wouldn't have made a different decision. Anyway, we're jumping too far ahead. You could tell I'm looking forward to when we get to that where we can dive, really dive into it because it's a hotly debated topic in book land and now we'll be in the show land and that's how it is. But it is just, it's, ugh, it's great. And so the last line of it is that the Duke and I are to be married. And so Daphne has made the choice. Simon told her the facts as he sees it. I'm using quotation marks there. Um, and she chose him. So that happened. So now to go to some book inaccuracies slash things that weren't in my top moments, because that's what we're talking about. So again, we're seeing some more of Benedict at the artist den and then um, going there to paint and everything. I wouldn't again 100% call these inaccuracies. They're just things we don't know of being true or not. And so he's at kind of this den of iniquity where there is naked models and there's people um, living the free life. It's very exciting. Um, again, the Duke was not planning to leave town at this point. So there's a lot of drama added to that where when he sees the painting that they were looking at together, he, you know, decides to go to that ball or whatever and things escalate. In the book, they actually are at a party and they go for a walk and it rains. And so they end up, are they in a shed? I can't remember, but they end up in a room and that's where Antony finds them or whatever. Um, Eloise is hunting for Lady Whistledown. So I wouldn't 100% call this book accuracy, but they are trying to give Eloise something to do. So we see her snooping through servants areas and picking on Penelope and asking for these things. So that happens a lot of the time. And then again, my biggest inaccuracy that is going to plague us for the next few episodes, and that is Marina is now out of confinement and the Featheringtons are trying to thrust her on this old guy, which is really just mean because they can try to find her a spouse, but it doesn't have to be this like old creepy guy. Like that is really just um, the mother being kind of cruel in my opinion. Um, but Colin, 
decides that he's going to court her and she decides to go for it. And so now Penelope is needing to watch Marina go after the person that she loves. And so it's very painful to see. Um, it isn't book inaccurate that Penelope will be pining, but it is book inaccurate to see, you know, him literally going after this other person and then that person inadvertently rubbing it in Penelope's face. It's very painful. It's good drama, but it hurts. Um, the prince going to propose. Again, there's no prince. Doesn't exist in the books. Daphne has other people coming after her, but not that. Um, this is a cute moment to mention. Again, don't know that it's book inaccurate. I assume so. But they're, the night that the duel is, is going to happen, Colin is the one who, like, sees his mother home. And they're both kind of drunk. And so he's, like, helping her up the stairs. It was so cute. I love seeing that stuff where she got a little too tipsy and he's getting her home. And I really do like the moment, too, where, like, the two guys are getting ready for the duel. And he's like all right, who died? And there's the little hint of the Colin that I love. We get to see little peeks of him. I'm hoping we do as we go along. And then the final thing I have to mention that's book inaccurate, but just tore my heart out, tore it out. So right before the duel, Anthony goes to see Sienna again. And she's like, how many times are you going to keep doing this? Stop showing up at my house. And because Anthony's plan is to fight Simon at dawn, he's either going to get killed and Benedict will need to be the one in charge of the family, or he is going to kill Simon and need to flee the country and then Benedict will basically be running the family and he could run away with Sienna. Um, and he actually says, he's like, come dawn, I'll be free either way. And well, I, sorry, I'm going to cry. Well, I don't like to see Antony not wanting to be Viscount because I believe that he honors his father's legacy more than he would want what he wants. And hopefully that is something that will get touched on in a later season. I, of course, am touched by the romance of him going to Siena and being like, come the morning, one way or the other, I'll be free. And the fact that I know that this is supposed to be towards like, if he lives, he can flee with Siena. But to say that death would be a freedom from being the Viscount just really kind of hurt me. So I'm, I'm crying a little bit for both because I really feel for him. Because um, I love, I do love Anthony. This, this version of him is not my favorite right now. Um, but I do, of course, feel for him in that moment. But it, it did hurt me that for the drama of the moment, they'd say that he'd rather be dead than have the responsibility of being the Viscount. And that's just... Come on, guys, we can find a better way to do that, right? We can find a better way to do that. And I'm sure part of that just has to do with, well, he's like, since I'm forced into this situation, I can find a silver lining. And the, the silver lining is I could have Sienna and we could be somewhere else together, which is a beautiful thought for the romance of it. But of course, I mean, we'll see the fallout of that. Sienna will be disappointed yet again because not only did he neither kill Simon nor be killed, but Simon will now be his brother-in-law and he will still be the Viscount. So there we go. Um, that is the thoughts that I have on an affair of honor. This one, again, I really feel like this is just stretching a few things out that I don't need to be stretched out. But I understand wanting to make the arc, you know, showing that distance between Simon and Daphne before we bring them back together again. Um, the next episode is called The Duke and I, which is very exciting. Love that it'll be the, t the title one. Um, but yeah, I will pick up with my reviews tomorrow, which, I mean, for you guys, you're seeing this day by day, but, um, I'm going to give my brain a break from the reviews and come back to doing reviews on Sunday. But I hope you are enjoying these. Of course, let me know your thoughts and feelings about this episode. How do you feel if you're a book reader? How do you feel about some of the changes? If you were so show watchers, there anything I've said that you are interested in what I said? Um, are you interested in reading the books after 
watching through these um, because really the heart and the fun and the romance of it is still there. It's just rearranged in some different ways. And this is a absolutely fantastic book series. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like this video. It really helps me out and I'll see you in the next one.